Today, what we are going to be covering is pathway modeling. And so I'm going to explain what this is as we go along and try and introduce you to a, an area that you will be kind of familiar with, but you probably won't have thought about too much in, in some respects. So I guess most of you in your undergraduate studies studied some biochemical pathways. So if I said the TCA cycle to you, you'd kind of in your mind think of this circular pathway where metabolites get uh, transformed from one form to another that provides a powerhouse for uh, metabolism or certain aspects of metabolism. So we all kind of understand pathways in, in that sense. I'm, I'm right in that, am I? You kind of have done some pathway. So apply those kind of same ideas, uh, but to apply them to signaling pathways. So obviously in, in signaling pathways, we're not dealing with metabolites changing from one form to another. What we're dealing with is, is signals going from the surface maybe to the internal part of the cell. So a, a, a cytokine interacting with its uh, receptor and the signaling cascade going down to the nucleus and things happening. So really all of life, if you like, is a pathway. And it's a set of interconnections between proteins whereby one protein does something to another, it phosphorylates it, you ubiquitinizes it, etc. etc. And over the last couple of decades we have been amassing lots of information about this through very detailed studies, often uh, uh, with some very elegant experimental designs and we've been building up this information. But then what that information exists in, it exists in the literature and if you want to study any given area you have to go and read that literature and begin to understand what any given system might, might look like. Now we all in, as I'll come on to in a moment, show, show you think about pathways in different ways and this is kind of obstructive. And so there's been a, a move in recent years to begin about how we would actually formally represent pathways. And if we have make these pathway representations, how then can we use them to understand the actual, I suppose, systems dynamics of, of a given system. So this is what we're going to introduce you to today. And we're going to go through some of the basics from this idea that you all have about pathways through to how we might actually build those pathways. I'm going to get you later on to, I'm going to show you how we might be able to do this, and I'm going to get you to have a go at doing it yourselves. And the thing to say about this is it's not easy, okay? Although you all kind of get familiar with the idea of pathways, if you have to build them yourselves, you kind of don't have the tools to do this. So this actually is something that inspired much of the work, a diagram uh, produced uh, well, in 2004, maybe 10 years ago now, and it was an attempt to systematically describe a macrophage, these leukocyte populations that are uh, one of the central part of the innate immune system, where what they've done is read the literature and they've essentially mapped out what they've understood as a series of symbols and lines connecting things together. Now, I think as we were when we read this, very impressed with the amount of work that had gone into this, and we were impressed by the fact that they captured all these details. But actually, when you come down to actually really study this and really get to read this, you find that there's some deficiencies, OK? Um, and we'll probably perhaps talk a little bit about those as, as we go forward. But it, it, it's the kind of driving idea behind the work that we're going to look at today, something called a process diagram, where what the aim is is to try and describe in a graphical way what you understand about a given system, OK?